this is the ship they say is unsinkable. It is unsinkable. God himself could not sink this ship. Imagine diving to the depths of the ocean where the legendary Titanic lies in its watery grave. You're inside a submersible, having paid a large sum of money to witness history and explore the secrets of the sunken ship. But something goes wrong. You lose contact with the surface. You hear a loud bang and then silence. This is what happened to five people on board the Titan submersible, which was part of a tourist expedition that ended in tragedy. But what exactly went wrong? Let's find out. On the night of April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic, the largest and most luxurious passenger ship of its time, collided with an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic Ocean. Within a matter of hours, the magnificent, unsinkable Titanic vanished forever in water more than two miles deep. More than 1,500 people were killed in one of the most tragic maritime disasters in history. The Titanic remained undiscovered for more than 70 years, until it was finally located by a joint French-American expedition in 1985. Since then, various teams of researchers and adventurers have explored, studied, and salvaged the wreck, revealing its secrets and mysteries. The wreck is located at a depth of approximately 12,500 feet, and the debris field surrounding it contains hundreds of thousands of items spilled from the ship as it sank, including furniture, dishes, luggage, clothing, personal belongings, and even human remains. The wreck became controversial and even endangered after it was discovered because there are numerous ethical and legal concerns regarding the wreck's ownership, preservation, and exploitation. Some people believe that the wreck should be left undisturbed and protected from looting and vandalism, while others believe the wreck is a valuable resource that should be recovered and displayed for the benefit of public education and entertainment. The wreck has become a popular tourist attraction as a result of the widespread public interest in it. Since 1985, human beings have visited Titanic nearly 250 times, with the majority of visits made by the famous film director, James Cameron who holds the record for the most visits, 33. As public interest in deep sea tourism grew, Stockton Rush, an aerospace engineer and pilot with a passion for exploring the deep ocean, founded a company in 2009. He established OceanGate with the goal of increasing access to the deep ocean through development of the next generation of crewed submersibles and launch platforms, both commercially and for scientific projects. Antipodes, Cyclops 1, and Titan are the Ocean Gate's three five-person submersibles. Antipodes can dive up to 1,000 feet, while Cyclops 1 can dive up to 1,640 feet. Titan, made of carbon fiber and aluminum, is the most advanced of the bunch, capable of traveling up to depths more than 13,000 feet, or more than two miles. Titan is designed to explore some of the ocean's most difficult and mysterious locations, such as shipwrecks, underwater canyons, and even volcanic vents. The Titanic wreck is one of its main attractions. Since 2021, OceanGate has been offering Titanic tours, with guests paying up to $250,000 to join an expedition that includes a dive to the wreck site using high-resolution cameras and sonar. Titan's pressure hole is spherical, allowing it to withstand extreme pressures and temperatures. Built with two large viewports that give you a bird's eye view of the underwater environment, it also has four strong thrusters that allow it to avoid obstacles and currents. However, Titan is also controversial and risky. OceanGate did not seek certification for Titan, claiming that overly strict safety regulations restricted innovation. The Titan is comparable in size to a minivan with limited space for only five adults. The temperature inside the submersible can fluctuate dramatically during a typical journey, which takes it thousands of feet into the depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. Submersibles, unlike submarines, have limited power reserves and must be launched and recovered by a surface support ship. The Titan, as the name suggests, weighs a hefty 23,000 pounds, and it's made of carbon fiber and titanium. However, the interior of the Titan is rather minimalistic. It only has one toilet and no seats, so a maximum of five people must sit cross-legged on the floor. The only way to see the surroundings is through a porthole, which allows passengers to see the Titanic wreckage. Because GPS signals don't work underwater, the Titan communicates with its mothership via text messages, ensuring regular updates every 15 minutes. 
Surprisingly, the submersible is controlled by a gaming controller that looks very similar to a PlayStation controller. The pilot can maneuver the submersible using this wireless control method. In the event that the remote control fails, the propellers can be controlled via an internal hardwire system. The safety precautions and operating procedures in Titan were clearly inadequate, and on June 18th, 2023, something went horribly wrong. Titan's communication was lost one hour and 45 minutes into its dive to the wreck site. Authorities were alerted when it failed to resurface at the scheduled time later that day. The Titan set sail from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, on board the research vessel Polar Prince on Friday, June 6, 2023. Stockton Rush, the founder and CEO of OceanGate Expeditions, led the expedition. Among the passengers were Shazada Dawood and his son Suleiman Dawood, who hailed from one of Pakistan's most prominent families. Shazada, aged 48, was the vice chairman of Engro Corporation, a leading Pakistani conglomerate, and a trusted advisor to Prince's Trust International. Suleiman, a 19-year-old student at Glasgow Strathclyde University, shared his father's love of learning and was described as a big fan of science fiction literature. Paul Henry Nargiolet, a former commander in the French Navy who was instrumental in the Titanic's discovery, joined them on this expedition. Nargiolet was a highly experienced and capable submersible operator pilot, having made 37 dives to the wreckage. He had spent years researching and retrieving items from the ship, contributing significantly to our understanding of this historic disaster. The fifth member was billionaire pilot and action aviation chair Hamish Harding. Harding was known for setting world records in aviation, including the fastest circumnavigation of the Earth via the North and South Poles, and for his penchant for exploring uncharted territories. Due to bad weather in Newfoundland, the expedition had been aimed to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. Harding announced on Facebook that a weather window had just opened up and they were going to attempt a dive tomorrow. The Titan began its descent to the Titanic wreck on Sunday, June 18th, 2023 at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. The dive was supposed to last only two hours. The submersible was supposed to explore the Titanic's bow section and collect data and images for scientific and educational purposes. During the dive, however, something went wrong. Communications between the submersible and the surface vessel were lost at 8.45 a.m. The Titan did not surface at the scheduled time and the Polar Prince notified the U.S. Coast Guard about the missing submersible. The U.S. and Canadian governments launched a massive search and rescue operation. To find the missing submersible, they sent ships and planes equipped with sonar buoys and underwater drones. They also requested assistance from commercial vessels and other countries. France dispatched a ship equipped with a deep sea diving vessel to assist in the search. On Tuesday, June 20th, 2023, some sounds were detected by a Canadian aircraft over a period of several hours. They were described as banging sounds that occurred at 30 minute intervals. However, it was unclear whether they were coming from the Titan or from somewhere else. On Wednesday, June 21st, 2023, a tragic discovery was made by a remotely operated vehicle sent by the U.S. Navy. The ROV discovered five pieces of Titanic debris on the ocean floor near the Titanic wreck site. The submersible's tail cone was the largest piece among them. The U.S. Coast Guard announced that the Titan had suffered a catastrophic loss of pressure, which caused the vessel to implode killing all five passengers on board. The implosion's cause is still unknown. It could have happened as a result of a mechanical failure or a collision with an object or an iceberg. Diving beyond the depth rating of a submersible can result in catastrophic hull failure or subsequent implosion. When something implodes, it collapses violently inward because external pressure exceeds internal pressure. As a result of being crushed by an outside force, an object collapses and squeezes on itself. The Titan's implosion would have been almost instantaneous, lasting only milliseconds, and the passengers would not have suffered long. James Cameron, the director of the 1997's blockbuster Titanic and an expert deep sea explorer, expressed his sorrow and criticism in the aftermath of the Titan submersible disaster. He said he knew that the submersible had been destroyed almost immediately after it lost contact, and he stated that he was skeptical of OceanGate's technology from the beginning, and he wished he had spoken up sooner. He compared the tragedy to the Titanic disaster, in which that captain also ignored repeated warnings about ice ahead of his ship, 
and instead sailed full speed ahead into an ice field on a moonless night. So too with Stockton Rush, who personally admitted he broke rules by making the Titan with carbon fiber and titanium. He himself stated, you are remembered for the rules you break, and there is a rule, you don't do that. You don't use carbon fiber and titanium. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. You're remembered for the rules you break. And you know, I've broken some rules to make this. And you know, I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me. The carbon fiber and titanium, there's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. He personally admitted that he did what he knew was wrong claiming it was better for innovation, for which he wanted to be known for. People even wrote letters and pleaded with Mr. Rush not to go on this adventure dive. He ignored them and went anyway. Both the captain of the Titan and the Titanic were arrogant. They ignored the cries of those giving warnings. As a result, many people lost their lives. Now, both vessels are in pieces, 12,000 miles below. Sincerely, thanks for watching. That was the last time Titanic ever saw daylight. 1,500 people went into the sea when Titanic sank from under us.